Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the second time I record this video. The first time I recorded it was 42 minutes. So I will try to skip some not very useful informations and I will try to go through this video more efficiently. Today's video will be about the new linear fusion rifle. I will be calling them LFR, linear fusion rifle, Doomit Petitioner. I have crafted three with precision instrument, recon with high ground and recon. And the third one has enhanced surrounded and reconstruction. I will be talking briefly about the one with surrounded because it's the same as uh, Briar's Contempt. High ground one will be the same as a Fire Line Storm Chaser. It will also be the subject for a future video. The main focus here in this video will be this one with reconstruction and enhanced precision instrument. The reason why this will be the main focus of this video is because these two perks serve the same purpose as the perks from Cataclysmic. Precision Instrument is a free damage boost and the Reconstruction is a free giving you ammo in the mag boost perk. Here on Cataclysmic we have the same. Beta Switch is Loki a free damage boost for solo players and Fertile Shower enhance your magazine for free. It will give you ammo in your mag from thin air. This is why it is crazy and overpowered. I have here on my desk a massive notepad. It goes uh, both ways, up and also down. I'll try to skip not so very useful informations here to go through this faster and more efficiently. So here I will split this video in six parts. Part number one, which is the generic intro right now. Part number two, showing you the perks in the 2 Foundry. Part number three, where I tell you that I am going to skip most of the damage numbers from Kali up to the end. Part number four, where I show you the damage numbers here on the Kamiura boss, Meatball Sack boss here in the Warlord Ruins dungeon, because I have tested on him. So you guys will see uh, damage numbers and you know exactly which linear is better than the other and by how much and when. Part number five will be a honorable mention to surround it. And part number six will be me asking you guys to sub, like, comment to help me out with the algorithm. So let's start. This is it for part one. Uh, moving on to part two where I show you the LFR here on the two foundry. This is the role I went for and I'll justify it. I have arrowhead break and a stability masterwork here with a stability battery to have the perfect, the best recall direction possible with the best stability power Possible. So landing all the crits with max rate of fire will be the easiest possible. Landing crits will be more realistic and more consistent. Moving on, the only perk here worth picking in the third column is Enhanced Reconstruction. It is super free. It is a combination between uh, Enhanced Overflow but better and also enhanced auto loading but better it's like a mix of the two and more free and better moving to the fourth column here the main focus of this video will be precision instrument as i said earlier so precision instrument is a buff that increases the more crits you do it goes from five percent it has five percent per stack all the way up to plus 30 percent when the perk is enhanced and since this is an aggressive frame lfr it fires three shots per one burst so technically it only requires you two bursts to reach max precision instrument buff this will be a uh, key to calculate how much damage this dish out and how much dps it dish out so now that we have talked about this now moving to part three well i tell you guys about the skip what i will skip the damage numbers and all the shenanigans that i have here uh, from cali don't worry i will be back to speak about this part specifically because i think it is uh, low-key important so we scroll down and skip this for now to keep this video as fast as possible so on kamura the meatball boss the taken meatball boss in the warlord ruins dungeon i have tested first cataclysmic with enhanced bait and switch i have fluted barrel enhanced battery so enhanced battery will give you six in the mag and once you have six in the mags you will be able to reach two fourth down the charms activations per one mag allowing you to have more free bullets from thin air a reload masterwork because with uh, cataclysmic you will eventually have to reload there is no reloading uh, for you for free you will have to reload it eventually and reproc bait and switch to go through the second mag back to the camera boss damage numbers here for the cataclysmic with bait and switch with three surges and well of radiance it did 88,000.9 with three surges well of radiance and bait and switch it did 120,000 with three surges well and a debuff it did 102 2000 with everything together three surges well better switch and a debuff it did 138 
thousand per shot from here and on i did not use the final number with the debuff i used this uh number here the second one this is we play mainly solar and we debuff the boss using revitalize and blast the artifact mod in the i think fourth column it has a very shitty duration so you will most likely go into shoot the boss when he's not debuffed 10 shots damage is the first non-buffed shot because it's the one proc in bait and switch and nine buffed shots with bait and switch because bait and switch lasts for 10 seconds and it takes you 10 seconds to fire 10 shots so you fire the first one you still have nine to go you would be very safe to shoot those nine shots they will all be in the bait and switch timer 10 shots damage will be 1.169 million damage which is low-key good. This is possible if you cap three lamps. So three lamps will give you 15 seconds in the Kamiura Meat Ball Sack boss. Cap three lamps, you get 15 seconds. You have time to throw a nade, uh, use Wither Horde or something. Another weapon, proc between switch, of course. Fire your 10 shots and uh, back to your other weapons. Debuff in the boss, it will give you a large margin of error. If you cap two lamps, you will have to proc bait and switch before DPS phase on the adds. So then you fire 10 shots on the boss that will be exactly 10 seconds because two lamps is 10 seconds which would be exactly 10 uh, beta switch shots on the boss this detail is just for people who actually care uh, about using this gun on the Kamiura boss for the sake of killing him here i used it for the sake of getting the numbers and uh, calculations and that's it so the dps basically is the damage of 10 shots divided by the time required to shoot the 10 shots which is 10 seconds and the dps will be 116,000.9 this is if you don't count uh proc in beta switch beforehand before dps phase if you do count the two seconds required to proc bait and switch which is fair i would say and if the two weapons you used to proc bait and switch were insignificant it does insignificant damage for example if you rock two primaries or if you shot two random trash ads with primaries and then you start beaming the boss with the LFR during DPS phase, that will also be a scenario. Uh, DPS will be 97.4. So on Cataclysmic, there is two DPS numbers to consider. One, if you don't count bait and switch. Two, if you do count bait and switch in the equation. So uh, moving on here, full ammo economy. We have 20 shots if you don't use reserve mods. That will be firing three times six with two bastard lonely shots. The total will be 32 shots because three times six is basically three times 10. You get uh, four bullets bonus on each magazine with two four times the charm activations per map. So 20 shots will give you 32 shots actually. And how many times it will be required to reload to fire all that is uh, three times so that will be three times the 10 shots damage plus a non-buffed shot plus a buffered shot if you proc bait and switch for the final two lonely shots so here we are looking at the 20 32 damage so you have 20 shots actually but it's uh 32 in practice the 20 32 damage is 3.7 million which is a lot it's crazy compared to all the other linears the reason why it is crazy is because you get free ammo with fourth time the charm for from thin air so the time required to fire all those 32 shots is 46 seconds because with one reload mod it takes you average two seconds to reload and two seconds to reproc bait and switch so proc bait and switch shoot 10 seconds reload proc bait and switch shoot 10 seconds reload proc bait and switch shoot 10 seconds reload and shoot two shots this is a total of 46 seconds uh so we divide this big number by 46 which is the time required to achieve it that will be 80,000.8 dps 80,000.8 dps if you fire everything you have with your cataclysmic without counting the damage dished by the other two guns when proc in bait and switch let's assume it's Two primaries therefore insignificant to reach this you have to be perfectly accurate also perfect timing on the reload and reprocking beta switch if you go one second faster uh, than what you should you might not proc button switch so this is it basically uh for cataclysmic we have uh four numbers that are very important uh, dps of 10 seconds dps uh if we count bait and switch the overall damage and the overall dps we will come back to this after we talk about doom it petitioner for doom it petitioner with enhanced precision instrument with uh three surges well and the enhanced perk 
the damage will go up from 42,000 all the way up to 54,000. The first burst will be 130,000. Second burst will be 158.3,000. Third burst and on with max buff will be 164.6,000. So to calculate the 10 shots damage, which is the max reconstruction uh, magazine, is the first burst plus the second burst plus the third burst times 8, because it's what's left in the mag. We are looking at 1.6 million damage. Per 10 shot time required to shoot all this it is 14 seconds it is possible if you cap three lamps in the uh, kamura meatball sack boss so you cap three lamps and you just beam the boss from a well of radiance and you achieve just that the damage will be uh, near 1.6 it will be like 1.5 if you miss a crit or two uh, as shown in the background footage uh, time required to shoot all this is 14 seconds again so we divide this damage by 14 and we get the 10 shots dps right here it is 114.9 thousand damage with no debuffs of course so moving on the full ammo damage uh, from Doom Petitioner. You have 20 shots with no reserve mods. Uh, how many times you need to reload per full ammo dump is uh, 3 times you have 10 shots with recon, you shoot them, reload you get 5, shoot them, reload you get 5 and that's the end. So damage per ammo dump is 10 shots damage plus 5 shots damage times 2 and that will be 10 shots damage twice first burst, twice second burst and 3 times third burst. This is if you don't wait for the second reconstruction to give you all bullets back in the mag. Uh, 20 damage without waiting is 3.1 million damage. Massive W, this is so much better than other LFRs we have in the game. If you wait for the second reconstruction, damage per full ammo dump will be 10 shots times 2, which is uh, 3.2 million, which is also uh, a lot, but you will have to wait for the second reconstruction. Uh, here, we will calculate the DPS if you don't wait for the second reconstruction. Time per ammo dump this is the fastest is 32 seconds with one reload mod so dps per ammo dump is this uh big number 3.1 million divided by 32 seconds which will give us a dps of 99,000.35. this is higher than cataclysmic by the way on all fronts so to reach this you have to be perfectly accurate low key just land one crit per burst to keep a uh, precision instrument buff up it is not as punishing as target lock target lock if you miss the target you lose the buff here you can miss a crit also has auto loading holster so reconstruction is really good it acts like auto loading holster and it gives you bonus shots in the mag it's low key like overflow and also auto loading so i would take uh, reconstruction every day of the week instead of for time the charm because heavy bricks are abundant uh, i think cataclysmic is uh when shit goes wrong, when you need extra shots, Cataclysmic will be there for you, providing you with extra heavy for free. But if there is heavy bricks around and you need to dish out damage and easy, Doom Petitioner here is to play. So right now I'm going to go up, uh, back up and read the notes. So these uh, notes are from after when I DPS tested on Kali. Note number one, near the same damage, as easy to use for solo players. Two, mag economy forgiveness. So 2A, on Doom Petitioner, it's okay if you miss a crit, you will still fire 10 shots consecutive since reconstruction is free AF. On cataclysmic it's not okay to miss if you miss one shot you will lose two bullets from your magazine because you will miss out on one for thunder charm activation then you will reload more more reloads equals less dps so it's not okay to miss crits with cataclysmic so note number three Doomed petitioner doesn't require beta switch activations usage of other weapons so you don't care if your other weapons have ammo if they are reloaded if they have range to tag the target to activate the switch in a given scenario. You won't need to have range on them and if the target is far, won't need ammo of other guns to keep bait and switch going. Uh, note number four, Doom Petitioner is always overcharged this season with the artifact, therefore it's more useful in hand, uh, high end PvE. Also keep in mind this season we have a lot of solar surge environment, so Cataclysmic will be as useful as well. Cataclysmic somehow easier to land crits with, and in the other hand, Doom Petitioner seems to make targets flinch, and their head moves when they flinch. I noticed this on Kali and also on some unstop champions. Six Cataclysmic will probably radiant with the artifact after a couple crits uh, with the artifact mod but won't matter if you have already uh, radiant and after you have radiant cataclysmic will proc kidling trigger adding scorch damage which is i calculated this it is a 0.25 percent more damage 
how I know this from the test against Kali. So a full cataclysmic rotation or Kali with two snipers, one rapid fire and one adaptive. Uh, it did this amount. So this is the sniper damage, 45,000 from both. And then this is the damage of 10 cataclysmic shots on Kali. And then this is the scorch damage on Kali after I, I put together all the scorch numbers I've seen on the screen. So this is the overall uh, damage I've saw on the screen when uh, going with a full cataclysmic rotation on her. And this this is the damage number I saw at, at the end screen after I wipe it. You know they are the same, so we are good. And then to calculate DPS out of this, the DPS is 64.8. But if you take off beta switch time, it's 54. And if you count the snipers, it's 57.9. Both 57 if you count the snipers and 54 if you don't are lower than Doomit Petitioner uh, DPS on Kali, which is 63.9. But if you don't count beta switch, DPS here is 64.8, which is higher than Doomit Petitioner. So this will lead us to uh, back to the Kamiura boss conclusions. I will say it again. Cataclysmic does more overall damage than Doom Petitioner because he has free from thin air ammo back in the mag with 4 Thunder Charm every time. Also, the overall DPS, if you use all of your ammo at once, Doom Petitioner have more DPS but less overall damage. Cataclysmic have more overall damage, less overall DPS. In my opinion, I would say Dumit Petitioner is for the square head, easy brain, smooth brain players. It's also extremely good and for free. Also, his heavy ammo is abundant. You can also use an exotic primary to make more heavy drops for your Dumit Petitioner. And if you use Cataclysmic, since you get a lot of ammo for free with Pertam the Char, I would recommend using easy or a exotic special weapon like Merciless, for example, so you can dish out even more damage between your beta switch activations, uh, let's say, to increase your DPS even further. So with Cataclysmic, I recommend using Easy, Weather Horde, something really good. With Doomit Petitioner, since it's already very good, I would recommend using an exotic primary, like Sunshot, for example, to drop more heavy bricks, so you can help your ammo economy, since there is no fourth thunder charm giving you ammo for free here on your Doomit Petitioner. So moving on to Doom Petitioner with Enhanced Surrounded. This is the Surrounded role I have right here in game on Doom Petitioner. It is basically the same as Briar's Contempt with Surrounded. They are the same weapon. I took this 62,000 because it's the more realistic one. Surge, Well, and Surrounded because you will uh, most likely not have a debuff than have a debuff when playing solo. So 186,000, which is 62 times 3. The damage of one single burst so here we are going to calculate the damage of 10 shots it's 1.8 million dps of 10 shots is 132 almost 133,000 dps which is a lot so we move to the full ammo economy we have 20 shots no reserves it will take us three reloads damage per ammo dump is 3.7 million which is low-key the same as the overall damage from cataclysmic then we have dps per ammo dump is 116,000, which is way higher than the dps from cataclysmic doom it petitioner with surrounded has the same amount of overall damage slightly more than cataclysmic without requiring activations of beta switch and you can achieve that much faster in 32 seconds and not 46 seconds that's why dps on surrounded is much higher so these are the same notes i uh, read earlier and here we have a final note high ground is cheesy and we will require more tests but i will give you guys spoilers high ground is the same damage buff as a fire line storm chaser therefore it is the same if you have a fire line storm chaser if you have teammates it's the same as if you are higher than your target with a high ground weapon so yeah that's it basically for the video this took forever to make it took uh this is like day three or four of me working on this video uh consecutive uh if you want to support the channel you can buy thanks you can become a member if you want to support the channel for free you can like comment ask me anything subscribe also i am giving away 1700 silvers silver packs for 10 winners, once my second channel reaches 1,000 subs, giveaway is on my Discord. How do you enter? You sub to my second channel to help me reach the sub goal. And then you react on the post on my Discord server, so I get your name. And then when the channel reaches 1,000 subs, I will uh, pick the winner with like a bot and then message you. Make sure you get notified or make sure you uh, take a look on your Discord DMs from time to time. I'll also announce winners here on my second channel and on Discord as well. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck farming. See you on my next video and peace. I can finally get some sleep after editing this.